14 years on from the last referendum. Both sides are fighting fiercely to get their messages across. They'll have two more weeks of pounding the pavements to do just that. That report from Brian Meakin. Well, joining me in the studio is the leader of the Welsh Liberal Democrats, Kirsty Williams, who's campaigning for a yes vote, and UKIP's Warwick Nicholson, who is voting no. Welcome to Dragon's Eye, both of you. Uh, Warren Nicholson, do you have any concerns about the failure of any of the, the major no groups to apply for official recognition from the Electoral Commission? Because the consequence of that has been a denial of radio and television spots to both sides, which perhaps might have enthused people and informed people a little bit more about, about what's at stake here. Well, so far as I'm aware, the, uh, the, the no campaign was spearheaded by True Wales. Um, they, <coughs> they, they had um, the might of the main political parties in, wa in Wales uh, lined up against them. Uh, and they were, they applied to be the official no campaign and then declined the funding because it would have been total waste of money as far as I can make out. They had six weeks to spend £70,000. Uh, and they didn't see the point in spending yes, it. Yes, I just w I wonder about the. They, they made a decision, didn't they, not not to, to, to go for it when when push came to shove. And I just I wonder. So. I just wonder whether that is a cause for regret because the chance to educate voters about what's at stake has perhaps been lost. We heard a lot of people, for example, in Brian's film there saying, "To be honest, I don't really know what this is about." Well, sadly, that is true. Um, I don't know who could have been the official no campaign. Uh, UKIP doesn't fit the criteria. Uh, we couldn't have done it. We are uh, the one political party that is against further powers for the Assembly, um, but we couldn't, we couldn't um, do any more than we're doing. All right. Yeah. Is it a lost opportunity, do you think, for both sides? Yes, it certainly is, because quite rightly you've identified that for many people uh, they simply uh, aren't aware of the question, and, uh, the question that's being asked of them. And if we'd had an official yes and no campaign and the broadcasting and the material to... Uh, to inform people about that choice, I think it would have been a much more positive scenario than we're facing now. But we are where we are and the Yes campaign is getting out there and trying to get that message across and respond to people's questions about what's being asked of them. I wonder though whether the Yes campaign is open to accusations that in some respects at least it's being misleading, perhaps even cynical. I've seen a number of press releases and operational notes, for example, from the Yes for Wales campaign, which refers to an application to Parliament uh, for the Assembly to legislate to bring in presumed consent for organ donation. The suggestion being that a yes vote in the referendum will help save lives of those waiting for organ donation and that just isn't true is it? Well what that example shows is that there is a, uh, a majority in the Assembly that's in favour of changing the donation system here in Wales. If we had the power we could have had that vote and we could have changed the system Well you couldn't already. necessarily. That's exactly my point though Kirsty Williams. That There is a debate over whether it's even devolvable and a yes vote in the referendum will not resolve that particular debate and even if it is devolvable as we know from Dragon's Eye last week there are many es experts who argue that introducing presumed consent by itself will not necessarily do anything to increase organ donation. But the issue is there is a majority of assembly members who's in favor, who are in favour of that system who, will, who do think it will make a real difference if we had the powers we could get on with that job now and instead we're caught up with a lengthy process where we have to apply to Westminster and that's not the only example. It's cynical you know, isn't it to use such an emotive issue to to try to get a few more yes votes on March that the 3rd. Is just, Deeply cynical. That is just one of the issues and if you look at the other material that's been putting out we'll be talking about the housing ELCO that took uh, all these years, three and a half years to get the housing powers, four years to get powers on mental health. It's just one example of many of the issues that we've okay. been unable let, to tackle because of this long drawn out complicated and expensive let, process. Let me bring Warren Nicholson in on that. There is an issue here Warren Nicholson isn't there about getting on with the day-to-day -day business of government and uh, as things stand it's overly bureaucratic and cumbersome. Yes, there is. The housing alcohol was, was, uh, was held in the Assembly for, I think, 104 weeks. Nothing moved. Uh, when it eventually got to Westminster, it was turned around in eight weeks. Um, where was the delay? Uh, they're using this as a stick with which to beat the, the, uh, the no campaign. Uh, but the, sadly, the 
uh, the assembly has failed in every one of its devolved areas. Uh, our educational system, our health system, the whole thing right. is falling all to right. bits. Very briefly, Kirsty Williams, do you deserve a yes vote from your performance thus far, very briefly? Well, the issue is I want a yes vote to make sure that politicians in Cardiff Bay are more accountable. I couldn't agree more. Labour plight have failed in many areas. But the issue is they well, are the able Lib Dems to were in government at one point in Cardiff in, Bay over the last are, ten years, weren't they? But yes, we're going to... the issue okay, is we're, the government isn't accountable because it can blame okay, delays in London gonna, for not taking the action we need we're now. We're going to leave it there. Thank you both very much indeed for coming in to talk to us.